Hey, Lexi. Hey, Phil. What's up, man? Thanks another for flying day, in. Another day, another boat. Yeah. I'm really sorry I couldn't pick you up at the airport. Uh, it's all right. There's a bunch of Ubers. We were, uh, we were just finishing up this project. The uh, TJ and Mike just left, and I threw on a white shirt for this video. So. You look clean. You look good. Thanks. Yeah, it wasn't this clean earlier. <laughs> You're looking at the new Italia 1498, and uh, we're in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, I live uh, just over there, actually, on my boat. Um, so this was a really fun project to have in my backyard, literally, right at Bert Javen's Yacht Yard. And this boat uh, just came off the ship, and we've been planning it for a long time, so I'm really excited to show it to you. Sounds good. Let's get, uh, let's get on board. All right, check it out. Italia. Must be German. <laughs> you bring more of those jokes with you? <laughs> Full of dad jokes, Phil. <laughs> uh, it's a pretty sweet boat. I mean, I love this cockpit and all this stuff, but this is not a boat review, so I'm gonna show you the work we did downstairs. Looks like another fast boat. Yeah. This is a 50-foot boat that's fully air-conditioned and there's no generator on board. No generator at all? None at all. And I think, I don't know, I think these days, like we're talking about it so much that it seems so normal, but if you really think about 50-foot boats, sail and power. Like, to have air conditioning, you need to have a generator. Absolutely. So, how is that possible? What, tell me about the different components that go into a battery-powered air conditioning on a boat like this. Yeah, well, the thing that we do a little bit differently, I think, is that we really focus on the air conditioning as the heart of the system. And if we can get that air conditioning system to be really efficient, then it's much more practical to run it from stored energy and batteries. So let's see the system. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Here we start after. We're using uh, VRV air conditioning, which you, I know you know about and we've talked about in our other videos. I don't know if it's going to get cozy in here. <laughs> um, but uh, the guys did a great job and we had this little bit of a system space. And this is the heart of the air conditioning system, the VRV8 compressor. And that delivers refrigerant to three air handlers in the boat that blow cold air. And what else we have going on? We've got here. a lot going on in here. There's a tight fit, but um, you've got the, uh, the inverter. And of course, an inverter converts the DC electrical power stored in batteries to AC electrical power that's used for higher power appliances like the air conditioning. And then we also have a transformer because uh, most of the boat's 110 volts and we need 220 volts for the air conditioning. And now we're in the weeds a little bit, but a lot of our customers ask us about this because they ask about DC air conditioning. And um, although there are great DC air conditioners on the market, this is a 50 foot boat, we need something a little more powerful. So we use this VRV system, which is only available in 220 volts. The good news is that even though there's a little bit of efficiency, electrical efficiency lost in all this power conversion, uh, it's picked right back up by the efficiency of this air conditioning system. So what's the size and, and power draw of, a, of that compressor? Yeah, this is, um, can produce about 35,000 BTUs of cooling power. Um, and with all the air handlers, the three air handlers and the compressor, it draws a maximum about, of about 1,500 watts of power. Wow. Which, um, you know, if you think of like the traditional self-contained um, air conditioners that have been around forever from the, the big brands, uh, you'd look at about 1,500 watts of power for just one of those units, and we have the equivalent of three in here. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So the, that compressor runs to three different air handlers throughout the boat? That's right. There's actually one under here, which, uh, you know, I'm not going to dig out, but we can show you the one in the salon and, and the one up forward. Sure. Main salon air handlers right here. So this is the, uh, these are the refrigerant lines. Uh, you know, a lot of folks when we start telling them about this, they go, oh, so it's a chiller. Well, no, it's not a chiller. The chiller chills water. This is using refrigerant. Uh, and uh, refrigerant is this special chemical that can exist as a liquid or a gas. And it changes between the two states and that's how we move heat around. 
There's a little more physics to it than that, but for this video, that's what we're going to say. So we use a specialty refrigerant hose, um, which traditionally would have been copper pipe. And uh, the hose makes it a lot easier for us to refit boats like this. And so that little box, how, like what capacity is that? And that's covering the entire salon here, isn't it? That's right. This can deliver up to 30,000 BTUs of cooling, which, um, you know, you could say is a little bit oversized for this space, but it doesn't matter because its capacity is variable. The fan speed is variable, but also the cooling capacity is variable and it matches the heat load in the room. And you also, if you're really attentive, you might know I said, well, 35,000 BTUs for that uh, compressor, 30,000 BTUs for this air handler. We still have two more air handlers, which happen to be 12,000 each. Well, if you add all that up, that's actually more than the capacity of the compressor. That's by design because we move the air conditioning capacity around the boat where it's needed most. And it all happens automatically. Uh, and that's part of the magic of how it works so efficiently. So we don't need a huge system. We don't need oversized compressors in every space. We only need the one. And once the boat's kept down to temperature, even that one compressor is only running at partial speed to keep the boat cool. So a use case might be that, you know, say it's midday and they're cooking and they're entertaining in the mm -hmm. main salon here. They can have almost all the capacity just for the main salon here and then have the, you know, the sleeping cabins off because you're not really using the sleeping cabins during the day. And then at night, you can, exactly. you can kind of reverse that. And exactly also, right. Phil, I'm learning a little bit. I've, like, <laughs> I've yeah. seen a few of these videos now. So yeah, yeah. You're, really, you're really picking up on it, Lex. <laughs> I'm impressed. Yeah. And you know, what you described is exactly right. If you want to manage your power, you can shut off the zones that you're not using. That's particularly applicable at night when you're asleep, right? You don't have to cool this whole space. We can save power and batteries by just cooling the sleeping cabins. Um, but even during the day, and even if you crank it up, it's going to automatically manage a lot of that efficiency by sensing where the heat's needed, right? where the heat load is greatest. Fantastic. So, yeah, we got one more air handler. Let's see it. It's up under where the uh, V-Birth mattress is going to go here. That's our little guy. We call it the Maxi 12. And that has duct that's distributed to three different places. Two um, outlets here in the sleeping area and then one in the head. And then this, this head compartment is, is really nice and cool and dry. And since it's a shower, air conditioned air has been dehumidified so it keeps the boat really fresh. It makes a big difference. Yeah, and I want to give a shout out to uh, Michael, uh, our tech who did the installation here. Uh, this seems like no big deal, right? Just having a little little duct outlet here, a little supply grill, but actually um, there was very little space for the duct runs and everything, so much so that we had to bring the duct into this hanging locker. And Michael, uh, who is a really fantastic Finnish carpenter, built the, uh, the cover for it to match the interior woodwork. It looks really good. Yeah. Looks like it's built like that from the factory. That's right. Yeah. So that's the gist of the air conditioning. Today was the, we actually, it's, it's only, what is it, April? <laughs> and uh, it hit 80 degrees here in Annapolis today. So it was a great day for testing. So where does that power come from? Where are the batteries in this boat? Great question. Right next to it. You're on the port side, um, under the settee here. We've tried to keep as much of the weight uh, close to the center line of, this, of, of the boat as possible, especially because this boat's used for racing. And um, we're using the super popular uh, Victron Energy Lithium system. And we have four uh, 200 amp hour 12 volt batteries here as part of that system that are all networked together. How much room time will he expect out of this battery bank, out of this air conditioner? We designed it for overnight operation, so 10 to 12 hours. Um, uh, for the sleeping cabins. Anything else over here you'd like to dive into at all? I think one of the things that's really important to point out is uh, a lot of folks are looking at these components or if you're shopping for a system like this you might find yourself you know researching um, a lot of the components and seeing some of the great products that Victron makes. Um, components aren't enough on their own. Uh, a system takes a lot of proper design and engineering and that's what we're, we're really good at. And it's really important to do that part right and then to install it to the correct standards so that these systems are safe, that they're reliable, and that they last, last a really long time. And so 
every piece of the system, like at, at the close of this job, the owner's gonna be delivered all of our wiring diagrams that we designed, um, all the manuals, the serial numbers, and everything that he gets is in this closeout package from us. Um, and there's a lot of various redundancies and fail safes and protections that are all built into this system to make it so reliable. Is a system like this offered from the factory? No, definitely not. So how does a customer get a system like this on their new boat? Well, uh, as you know, at BoatRx, we're uh, a new boat like upfitting option. Um, we do some refits as well, but uh, our point of sale is through the boat broker. And so this boat was, um, and this whole brand now, is being represented by David Walters Yachts here in Annapolis. And we're really excited to continue working with them and their new customers for um, these systems because it makes a lot of sense to get a new boat built in Europe, but have it just built to the basics so that it's delivered on time and it's not overly complicated. And then, you know, pick one of our packages, sold to the broker, and then we do the install at the time of delivery. Do it right here in Annapolis. Yeah. Or New England. <laughs> or Maine, or, uh, you know, the various places that we serve. Absolutely. Yeah. So you got batteries. Uh, I think I know where your head's going. Yep. So where do we uh, generate the power that actually gets stored in the batteries? That's right. We said we generate the power on main engine alternators. So there's no generator, but we're still using fossil fuels to rapidly charge the batteries. But we always say, why should you need a generator if you've already got a big diesel engine in the boat? So we um, use these two 250 amp 12 volt alternators from Balmar. Uh, it was a customer's choice to, to go with a 12 volt system on this boat, although most of our projects um, of this scale are using 48 volt systems um, for various reasons, but mostly because of the increase in efficiency and the increase in charging power and charging speed with a 48 volt system. Um, but we went with a dual alternator setup here and we wanted to make sure that he could recharge his battery bank in a matter of hours. Now, are these alternators, are they simply just bolt them on and, and they're good to go? Or like, how does it actually, what's so special about you're, these? You're so good at leading me in, Max, you're <laughs> right. Um, these alternators, okay, so when you've got a lithium battery system, it's just so important that you're managing, you're charging, and you're discharging appropriately. And in this case, these alternators are actually talking to the batteries and the batteries are talking to the alternators. So the batteries say what the alternators need or what they need from the alternators. And the alternators are also being monitored for their internal temperature, their voltage, the amount of current that's coming out of them, the engine RPM, all these things are being taken to, into account so we can achieve the most rapid and efficient charging. And the, the missing link or the important piece that sits between those two components are the wake speed alternator regulators. And those are um, back in the aft cabin there, if you want to take a quick look. Yeah. So that's these two white boxes over here. Yeah. And so those do a number of things. It's like it does a lot that's really sophisticated. But one of the things it does is it actually regulates the temperature of the alternators. And any alternator loses a ton of efficiency when it gets hot. And in fact, when it gets too hot, you're gonna start losing 20 or more percent of its rated output. So if we monitor the temperature of the alternator, and as it starts to approach a given temperature set point, we actually back off its output, we can keep the temperature in range at a certain point before it starts to dramatically lose efficiency. And that's one of the things that those regulators do. So we're always trying to maximize our output, but not overheat things and keep all the loads you know, right in line. The other thing we do is we're, regulating the, the power and the resistance put on these belts based on the engine RPM. So when the engine's at a lower RPM, we're generating less power, not just because the alternators are spinning less, but because we're actually putting less resistance on the belts. And then at the mid range um, of the RPM curve for the engine, when the propeller is actually not fully loading the engine, we take the leftover power and we load these alternators up 100% and we generate as much power as we can. Then at the other end, at the top, of the RPM curve when you have full throttle. We're also backing off because we need all that power available for the propeller and we take less power for the alternator. So it's this really smart system, um, but it's really installed in a way that it's meant to be bulletproof. 
you're again you're reinforcing that that systems approach to this, where it's not just you can't just strap on a couple of hybrid alternators and make it work. It has to be one giant cohesive system. That's right. And you know, you were asking questions both about the engineering, but also about like our sales process. Um, we've been you know in communication with this customer for like eight months um, about this new boat to anticipate it. You know, some of the projects we have we can do we can turn around really quick because it's a boat we've done before. But if it's a new boat um, that we've never done, you know, it takes a long time to get these things right. And that's what's really important to us. Just a lot kidding. of back and forth with us, the dealer, the, the builder. shipyard, the builder, yep. everyone involved. So. Yep. So, um, but so, the end result is great. I mean, I was really enjoying being here today with the air conditioning on, you know. And we, we, we unplug the shore power to be testing things. And it's just really, really satisfying to have the, boat, the whole boat be cooled and no generator running in the background. So if someone watching this wants to actually see our work um, and they want to experience that sort of comfort, is there a way they can see this boat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good question. I, I totally forgot. Um, this is going to be in the uh, spring Annapolis Boat Show. Um, and so, uh, yeah, go uh, check out the boat at the sh show and talk to the guys at David Walters and go buy yourself an Italia. <laughs> We'd love to do another one. So... Well, thanks for showing me around, Phil. My pleasure, Lex. Yeah. See you soon.